What is the role of religion in our ever-changing world? From the News Channel 5 Network, this is Issues of Faith. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Issues of Faith. Very happy today to have with us the new bishop of the Diocese of Nashville, Bishop Spaulding. Thank you for being here. Thank you. It's good to be here. We're honored to have you here. Um, so you were just selected. Yes. And you're selected by the Pope. Exactly. And as a, as a non-Catholic, I'm fascinated by that. I'm sure Catholics are fascinated by that. My first question is, how does that come about? How, how were you selected? Did you, did you ask for the position, or how, did, how does that work? Well, it's one of the great questions in the church. How does a bishop get selected, chosen? And uh, it starts some time ago with bishops in the province and in the country asking for their presbyterates, the priests within the diocese, to say who in the diocese would have the qualities for bishop. And so a bit every about three to five years they will send these letters out to their priests and ask for names. And then the, that bishop takes all those names, collates them, and will send it in to the nuncio after discussing with the other bishops around his diocese those three top names. And so the nuncio takes names that are coming in from all the United States, also brings those together, takes some uh, background work and does some investigation, and then sends it over to Rome for what is called the Congregation for Bishops. And then over time, the congregation also takes its uh, work very seriously and looks at these priests throughout the whole United States, examines their backgrounds, and then when dioceses open up, mindful of these backgrounds, then they submit what the same thing that has gone all along the steps. Three names, three names, and finally three names is sent to the Holy Father, usually with sort of a mark or a check beside one name, and then he's the final person to select the man to become bishop. So after it's selected, just one more point, is he communicates back to the nuncio in the United States, just so you understand the nuncio is the ambassador of the Holy Father. Uh, it's Archbishop Christophe Pierre right now, and he works out of Washington, D.C. He represents the Holy Father to the United States. And so both uh, diplomatically, but also w within the church as well throughout the United States and once that is so back to the story once the name is chosen the Archbishop receives that and then he makes the call to you Wow you were in Kentucky yes. you're from Kentucky yes did you know you were in the running do you do you know you're one of the names being submitted to the Pope that's a very good question as well uh, you hear rumors throughout the whole process because part of that uh, vetting, we will call it, of the candidate is certain letters are sent out. And when those letters are sent out, even though it's uh, you're put under the pontifical secret w with the, the, uh, each person selecting it, I think that begins to raise people's awareness within the diocese that you, you do know some people are looking at you for becoming a bishop. But those rumors last for years. And, and so you sort of have uh, uh, concern or, or, and it's also a compliment at the same time because you, you are a priest who is a pastor of a parish. You're doing a lot of good things there, which I was at Holy Trinity in, in Louisville. But you also have in the back of your mind, anywhere at any time, a call may come. And so, yes, you do hear kind of rumors, but they last for years, and so they kind of dissipate after a while. But then all of a sudden it comes back on the screen whenever you see a, a, a diocese that opens up around Louisville. And so, so you, the, the uh, rumor mill started up again when the Diocese of Nashville became open. So you there, you're, you're there in, in Louisville as the priest of a church, yes. and then you get this call. Yes. What goes through your mind? What, what, what did you think when you were first told you will be the next bishop of the Diocese of Nashville? So it, it's, it's quite surreal 
in, in its uh, effect on you when you're sitting there. Uh, the phone call from the uh, nuncio, Archbishop uh, Pierre, was his voice was as clear as a bell. It was like he was standing right beside me. And so I knew who he was and I knew that voice. And when he started talking to me, uh, I mean, my heart started pounding, my hands were shaking a little, and because I knew some, the, the, a question was coming. I didn't know where, but I knew a question was coming, and clearly he said the Diocese of Nashville. And they make a, a, a request. They ask the Holy Father now ask you to be the bishop, and your response. And how I responded that day, even in all the nervousness and all, he, he tried to calm me in, in situations of, he's sort of a, a, a witty person, a sense of humor, and he was trying to lighten the, the situation that was going on in that moment, but he finally did ask, will you accept the call to be Bishop of Nashville? And I said, uh, with all the gifts that God has given me, I will serve. And that was my answer. And he goes, that's a yes. <laughs> and then he went on with the conversation. And all right, so when you look at Nashville now, you've had time to look at it. What do you think, uh, I'll ask this, then we'll go to a break here. But what do you think the biggest challenges facing our um, diocese are? Well, first of all, I want to say it, it, it's a diocese that's blessed. Okay, it, it, there are many blessings here, and sort of in the parish I came from at times, I said, we have good problems here. And what I meant by that is, these are problems that we have resources that just need to be organized and directed and given a proper mission in, in the world. And if we can all come together behind a particular mission and uh, purpose, we'll be fine. And so I really see the Diocese of Nashville in the same situation. It's a, it's a diocese that is growing. Uh, we're very blessed with our, our priests, our deacons, our consecrated religious, our seminarians. We have a strong number of seminarians. And our lay faithful are, are coming, just like the state and the city itself is growing, so is the Church of Nashville. And so I wanted to give, just give it direction and, and support. The bottom line I've told everybody right now internally is I want to look, I want to listen, and I want to learn. Everybody, when you come into a parish, as you come into a diocese, they want to know from the pastor, from the shepherd, from the bishop, well, what's your direction, what's your vision, what, wh where do you want us to go? And first I have to look and listen and, and uh, the priest will be key to that. I, I need to talk to the priest and, and tell them of my support, my uh, gratitude for their service. But as pastors, what do you see and hear? Because the number one place our people experience the church is in their parishes. And then in our schools. And then we go out from there in other ministries. But I truly these first weeks and months ahead, I want to look and I want to listen and I want to learn and then I can properly lead. And I want to add, we're going to go to break and I want to ask when we come back, one of the big issues facing many denominations and that is uh, attendance and, and young people, yes, getting exactly. young people back into church. Uh, we'll take a break, uh, talk about that, uh, be back right after this.